everyone! I'm Naomi Gonzalez, the Education and Interpretation Specialist at the Science History Institute. Welcome to Science at Home, where we're going to learn some cool facts and hear some stories all about the history of science, and then do a fun and probably messy activity at the end. Today, we're going to learn all about alchemy from Lisa Barry Drago, Research Curator at the Science History Institute. Have you ever heard of alchemy before? What about Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone? I'm sure that rings a bell. Raise your hand if you read that book more than once. Guilty as charged. Well, do you remember Nicholas Flamel? He was the wizard who successfully created the Sorcerer's Stone. And that stone granted him a long life. If you remember, he was just celebrating his 665th birthday in that book. And the Sorcerer's Stone was almost stolen by he who must not be named. Today, most people know alchemy and alchemists for trying to turn metal into gold or for trying to find the elixir of life, often called the Philosopher's Stone. But is that all they did? I thought alchemy was supposed to be science, not magic. Let's hear more from our friend, Lisa. Hey, Naomi. So you want to learn about alchemy. Well, to understand alchemy, first we have to know a little something about metals. That's right, metals. So I'm going to start us off with something really basic. A tin can. Tin cans aren't usually tin these days. They're more often made from steel. Why steel? Because it's incredibly hard and durable. Keeps food safe as it travels. Other metals wouldn't work as well. Take lead, for example. Not only is it poisonous, but it's incredibly soft. It can be scratched by just your fingernail. What about gold? Well, it's too precious, but it's also soft like lead. So how do we know all this information about what metals act like, what they're good for? For that, you could thank an alchemist. Think of alchemists as early chemists. They studied the natural world and how all kinds of matter and different substances and chemicals acted and reacted. They wanted to know how metals and minerals and plants all worked and how the human body worked too. They conducted experiments using fire and sulfur and salt, changing the properties and qualities of things to better understand how they were put together and how they could come apart. Alchemists had a few different goals. Some of them were just really curious. They were in it to discover new knowledge. Some wanted to find ways to turn less valuable metals, like lead, into gold. We know now that that's not possible, but at the time it really seemed like it could work. Other alchemists wanted to use chemicals to create new medicines that would cure disease and help people live longer, healthier lives. Sound familiar? It should. Modern scientists do this work today in chemical laboratories with more updated equipment and electricity, but the basic principle of conducting experiments and testing the qualities of matter, hoping to help the human race, is pretty much the same. Alchemy was a big deal. Discovering a new element or finding a new medicine could make an alchemist famous and wealthy. That's why some alchemists wanted to protect their research. They didn't think just anyone should be able to read their notes and their recipes for experiments. So they used things like symbols cryptic illustrations to hide their secrets. Their illustrations were magical, whimsical, with phoenixes and dragons, but the illustrations usually represented a concrete step in an experimental process. They used symbols for the sun and moon to represent different metals like gold and silver. Silver for the moon, gold for the sun. They created charts and tables like this one to help their fellow alchemists, who were in on the secret, to decipher their meanings. Alchemy eventually evolved into modern chemistry. It helped lay the foundation for things like the periodic table and even the chemistry set. Those early experimenters made a lot of today's discoveries possible. So what do you think? Do you want to unlock an alchemist's secrets? Me too. And I think Naomi's got an experiment for us. Thanks, Lisa. Wow, alchemy sounds really cool and a little bit dangerous. Our experiment today won't be using fire or sulfur but there will be some salt, and it'll probably get a little messy. We're going to be making our own ink using berries, and then we'll get to create our own alchemical symbols. But don't worry, you're probably more familiar with alchemical symbols than you think. Have you ever watched Sailor Moon? It's a really great anime. Personally, my favorite is Sailor Jupiter. Do you remember the symbols on their little transformation wands? Let's look back at that chart that showed all those alchemical symbols that Lisa showed us a little bit earlier. Take a look at the symbols for Luna or Moon, Mercury, Venus, 
Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Now let's look at the symbols for our respective Sailor Scouts. Do they look familiar? Alchemy is all around us, and apparently it's also used to fight evil in the name of love and justice. So let's start thinking about what alchemical symbols you would create. Keep them right in here, and let's get started. So here we have half a cup of blackberries, half a teaspoon of vinegar, and half a teaspoon of salt. You're also going to need two bowls. I have one here that's stainless steel and one off to the side that's plastic, which we'll be using later. You'll also need a potato masher, some mesh strainers. I have two here. You'll see why in just a few minutes. And a whisk. A small one works if you have it, but any size will do. So the first thing you wanna do is take one of your strainers. I'm gonna take the large one here. I'm gonna put it over my bowl. I'm gonna put my berries in the strainer. And then here comes the fun and somewhat messy part. We're gonna use our potato smasher and we're gonna smash the berries through the strainer. This is gonna help get all of that juice and liquid that's normally in the berries. And when we smash them, it's gonna end up in the bowl. It's going to look a little cool or a little gross, depending on where you land. And if it gets a little clogged up, just tap, tap, tap some of it off. And then resume your smashing. And you want to smash the blackberries down as much as you can. Don't worry if a few bits get through the strainer. That's what the second strainer is for. So we're just gonna keep smashing, keep smashing. All right, once you've smashed your berries as much as you can, it's gonna look a little bit like this, and you wanna move it right over to the sink. Okay, so look at this really nice dark liquid that we have here. But you can see there's a few little bits of what we call organic material. So some of the bits of the blackberry got through the strainer. So that's what our second strainer and our second bowl is for. This little strainer has what we call a tighter weave. So the holes here are a lot smaller than the big strainer I just used. So if we pour the ink, well, the almost ink, through this strainer, it'll get out all of those little bits and only leave us with the juice. So be very careful and pour right through. Try and get all the juice out of this bowl here. Okay, and then just move the juice around the strainer. Okay, see how I'm doing that? Make sure you're doing this over the bowl too, okay? This is a plastic bowl. We're gonna wash it immediately when we're done so it won't stain, but just make sure you don't get the juice anywhere else because it'll stain and it'll be really tough to get out. Okay, once that's done, get the last bits and you see what's left? That's all the organic matter, all those little blackberry bits that we don't want ruining our ink. So we'll put it in this bowl. We'll put that in the sink too. And then we'll add the last of our ingredients. So we're gonna put in the vinegar and then the salt. And then you wanna take your whisk and mix it up nice and good. All right, make sure we get all that salt. All right, this is nice and mixed. Now, where are we gonna put our ink? I have 
a small little vial and a funnel. So if you have a funnel or something small like this you can put your ink in, that works great. So let's get some paper. Where did I put that paper? Oh, it's down here. Found it. And let's start thinking about those symbols. Hmm. Any good ideas? Ooh, I know. Cell phones. Cell phones are present in all of our lives and we use them for everything. Let's see if we can create a symbol for a cell phone. Now I got these at my local Michaels, but you can use whatever you have at home that will write really nicely and will work really well with your ink. I really like how thin the tip of this paintbrush is. It really allows me to write my uh, letters or our alchemy symbols. So make sure you have something that you ha uh, have control over as you're writing. And let's start with our cell phone. So cell phones are generally a nice square box with numbers, buttons, and a small screen. So let's just do a small square or a rectangle. This is looking slightly more like a rectangle. Put a little screen and then one, two, three, four. A couple of little dots. And then just like our chart with our uh, alchemy symbols, we're going to write what symbol this is next to it. So let's write cell, dip again, phone. Very good. That way, other alchemists will know what this symbol is for. I'm thinking, looking out my window here, the next symbol we could create is one for a tree. Right? Nature, trees are everywhere. They have positive impacts on our lives. And many, many people study plants and trees and how they help uh, humans and the earth. So let's do a tree. So we'll do right under the cell phone symbol here. We'll do one line this way, one line that way. I'll dip one more time and then let's create the leaves. All right, other alchemists will understand what that symbol means. So just like our cell phone right next to that symbol, we'll dip our ink again and we'll spell tree. All right, so let's do one more. I'm thinking because they're everywhere, you interact with them every day, and they can have positive and sometimes negative effects on you, but mostly positive. Let's create a symbol for humans, like you and I. We'll keep it very simple, just like some of our other symbols. So we'll start here, we'll do little legs, little arms, we'll dip again. Got our little head here. Perfect. Human. And just like our previous two symbols, we'll write right next to it what the symbol is for. Human. Perfect. Now you can see some of the ink is already starting to dry. So when it came out that kind of light pinky mauve color, it dries this really cool kind of blue purple color. That's really, really awesome. I'd love to see what symbols you create. If you created these three with me, I'd love to see what they look like. And if you created other symbols, we'd love to see it too. So follow the Science History Institute on all of our social medias. We'll put the handle right down here. And tag us. Happy experimenting.